from Hollywood, the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. For your enjoyment, here is the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Faye and Phil Harris. <laughs> Tonight, throughout the world, millions of people are ushering in the new year. Some are celebrating it with their families, some are going to nightclubs, and others are spending a quiet evening at home with a few intimate friends. The latter is the case with Phil's and Alice's sponsor, Mr. Scott. As we look in, Mr. Scott and his wife are checking their guest list. Are you sure you took care of all the invitations for our party, Clyde? Uh, yes, I did, Myrtle. <laughs> I mailed an invitation to the Bennetts, the Peppers, the New Roths, and the Ackmans. How about the invitation to Phil Harris? I dropped that down the sewer like we planned. <laughs> oh, you didn't really. No, no, I mailed him an invitation. I sent it to Phil Harris, 176 Spruce Street, Kansas City, Missouri. <laughs> but Clyde, Phil Harris lives in Encino, California. <laughs> know what I'm doing every minute. Well, you shouldn't have done it. I'd like very much to have Mrs. Harris here. So would I. She's a lovely person. And Mr. Harris isn't such a bad sort. No, no, I guess he's all right if you can stomach that sort of thing. <laughs> I really don't mind Harris so much, but I just can't stand that ghoul that's always with him. Ghoul? Oh, of course. Mr. Remley. Uh, do me a favor, Mert. The next time we're having a party, don't put Harris's name on the guest list. Well, don't blame me. You're the one who mentioned the party to him, and I felt obligated to send an invitation. Oh, well, I'd better go up and put my tuxedo on. The guests will be arriving in an hour. Well, don't upset yourself about Mr. Harris. He won't get the invitation, so he won't be here. Let's have a drink to that. <laughs> I don't want to stay home on New Year's Eve. It's 7 o'clock already. Let's plan to go someplace. Now sit where you are. We're not leaving this house until we get an invitation to Mr. Scott's party. But, Phil, you've been expecting it all week. You've been sitting around in your tuxedo since Tuesday. <laughs> don't exaggerate. I only put it on when I got up this morning. Well, what makes you so sure you're going to be invited? Oh, I saw Scotty the other day, and he told me about the party and practically invited me. What do you mean, practically invited you? Well, I happened to be in his office the other day, and I peeked over his shoulder and saw him making out his guest list. And I said, uh, I don't see my name on there. And he said, it ain't because you're nearsighted. <laughs> <laughs> and I laughed, and, and he laughed, and, well, it's obvious. What's obvious? He didn't say I shouldn't come. <laughs> Alice, I know he's inviting us. There must be an invitation in the mail. But it's Sunday. There's no delivery today. Well, then he'll send us a telegram. Well, you've been calling Western Union all day, and there's no message for you. Well, he'll find some way to get in touch with us. Look out the window. Maybe he's sending up smoke signals. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it isn't my favorite brother-in-law, Tallulah Fayhead. <laughs> Stop kidding yourself, Philip. Mr. Scott is not going to invite you. He doesn't want you at his party. He doesn't want me? No. Are you kidding, Baxter? <laughs> I make any party I go to. And if you don't believe me, ask any member of the Musicians' Union. <laughs> I'm known as the Pearl Mesta of Local 47. <laughs> Poor Alice. She hasn't been invited any place since she married you. Now, what are you talking about? When Alice was a star in pictures, she was invited everywhere. She had a date with one of her leading men every night. Men like Thomas Meehan, Wallace Reed, and Lou Coleman. <laughs> Not to mention J. Warren Kerrigan and Snub Pollard. <laughs> How about William Farnham and Richard Barthel? All right already. <laughs> that was before my time. Look, Willie... Alice gets to go out plenty since she married me. Maybe we don't go out with the movie crowd, but we get a lot of invitations from my friends. 
Only last week, we attended a formal three-cushion billiard exhibition at the home <laughs> of Side Pocket Sam. <laughs> Sam. That's right. He's the Beverly Hills socialite and schnooker expert. <laughs> and a lovely party it was, wasn't it, Alicia? Oh, yes. Yes, especially the dinner. I asked a man at the head of the table to pass me the meatballs. What happened? He chalked up, broke them, and everybody got one except me. <laughs> Alice, I'm sure that Mr. Scott would... Uh-oh, maybe that Scotty came over to invite us personally. I'll get it. Hiya, Scotty. We'll be glad to come to you... Oh, it's you, Remley. How are you? Oh, my poor head. <laughs> I'll never do it again. I'll never touch another drop as long as I live. Oh. Well, you kicked off early this year, huh, Bob? <laughs> you must feel terrible. No, I feel great. Then what are you doing? Practicing for tomorrow morning. <laughs> Why do you have to say it tonight? Because I ain't going to be in no condition to remember it tomorrow. <laughs> well, what are you doing tonight, Frankie? Um, well, that depends. What are you doing? I'm going to a party at Mr. Scott's house. That's good enough for me. <laughs> Frankie, you haven't been invited. Well, what's that got to do with it? I haven't been invited to some of the best parties I ever attended. <laughs> I'll be glad to go with you, Curly. I'll be glad to have you go, except for one thing. I haven't been invited yet either. Oh. Well, in that case, I'll have to go without you. <laughs> I'll call you tomorrow morning and let you know how it was. Hello, Frankie. Oh, hello, Alice. I hear you're going to Mr. Scott's party. No, I'm not. I haven't been invited. I know more people that haven't been invited to this party. <laughs> Mr. Scott hasn't asked anybody. I wonder if he asked Mrs. Scott. <laughs> I just can't understand why he didn't ask me. Frankie, after the way you behaved at Mr. Scott's last party, you will never be invited to his house again. Why, what did I do? When you were leaving, you grabbed Mrs. Scott, swept her into your arms, bent her over backwards, and kissed her on the lips. That was an accident. <laughs> I thought she was the maid. <laughs> Well, if we're going to Scott's, let's go, huh? We're not going. Phil, let's make a reservation someplace, okay, huh? Okay, okay. Where do you want to go, honey? Uh, how about Ciro's? That's where we spent our first New Year's Eve together. Do you remember? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was ten years ago. Gee, it was romantic. The moon was bright. The band was playing softly. And you were singing our song. The thing. <laughs> it wasn't the thing, and besides, you were the one that was singing to me. You were singing that beautiful ballad that I taught you. The marching song of the Confederate Army. <laughs> Sing it again, will you, Minnie Pearl? Ask me how do I feel, ask me now that we're cozy and clingy. Well, sir, all I can say is if I were a bell, I'd be ringing. From the moment we kissed tonight, Doo -doo. that's the way I just got to behave. Doo -doo. But boy, if I were a lamp, I'd light. Doo -doo. Or if I were a banner, I'd wave. Ask me how do I feel, little me with my quiet upbringing. Well, sir, all I can say is if I were a gate, I'd be swinging. And if I were a watch, I'd start popping my spring boy. Or if I were a bell, I'd go ding dong, ding dong, ding. Ask us how do we feel from this chemistry lesson we're learning. Well, all right, boys, how do you feel? Well, dear, all we can say is if we were a bridge, we'd be burning. Oh, I knew my morale would crack. You gotta be careful. From the wonderful way that he looked. Mm -hmm. Boy, if I were a duck, I'd quack. <laughs> or if I were a goose, I'd be cooked. Ask me how do I feel? Ask me now that we're fondly caressing. 
Wonderful, isn't it? Oh, if I were a salad, I just know I'd be splashing my dressing. Or if I were a season, I'd surely be spring. Or if I were a bell, I'd go. If I were a bell, I'd go. If I were a bell, I'd go. Ding dong, ding dong, ding. Ah, <laughs> oh, honey, that was beautiful. Brings back memories to me. <laughs> to me, too. That was the night of the proposal. Yeah. I'll never forget the way your face lit up when I said yes. <laughs> <laughs> Look, honey, if we're going to Ciro's, you better go up and get ready. Okay, honey, I'll be right down. Hey, Curly, why spend a lot of money at Ciro's when we can go to a free party at Scott's house? <laughs> Look, Remley, for the last time, I keep telling you, we didn't get an invitation. You give up too easy. Maybe the man's been trying to get you on the phone and can't. Why don't you call him? Yeah. Yeah. The least I can do is call and find out if he's been trying to get me. Sure. Huh? Give me that phone. Here you are. Now, I'm not going to invite myself. I'm just going to find out if he's been trying to reach me. Hello? Uh, hello. Uh, is Mr. Scott there? Speaking. Who is this? Uh, this is Phil Harris. So, Sally, you have a long number. <laughs> uh, this, uh, Chicken Lee Longley. Hmm. Last time I called him, he was a German delicatessen. <laughs> I wouldn't mind so much, but his dialects are so lousy. Now look, Mr. Scott, I know it's you, and I'm going to keep calling you until you run out of those corny dialects. Oh, nuts, he's got me. <laughs> what do you want, Harris? Well, I just heard you've been trying to get in touch with me all day. Is that right? No, it isn't. Uh, well, let me put it this way. The operator just called me and said that you've been trying to reach me on the phone since early morning. The operator said that? Yes, she did. Well, you call her back and tell her she's a big, fat liar. <laughs> What's on your mind, Harris? Well, uh, Mr. Scott, being it's New Year's Eve, I thought that maybe you and Mrs. Scott would uh, like to go out with Alice and me. We can't. We're having a party. <laughs> you are? Well, there's nothing like having a party and inviting your friends over to the house, I always say. <laughs> yes, sir. That's what I always say, and I wonder how long I'm going to have to keep saying it before he thinks <laughs> Harris, I don't know what you're talking about Remley, he ain't taking the hand You ain't handling it right, Curly Let me talk to him Okay, but be subtle about yeah, it Yeah, yeah Hello, Mr. Scott, this is Frankie Remley What a disgusting way to start a conversation <laughs> <laughs> What do you want, bunghead? <laughs> That's no way to talk to a man who's going to be a guest at your house tonight. Remley, listen to me and listen closely. I'm having a nice, quiet gathering for a few intimate friends. You are not included in my plans. I want no part of you. And if you dare come within a hundred yards of my place, I'll cut you down with a high-powered elephant gun. <laughs> Just for that, I got a good mind not to show up. <laughs> what did he say, Frankie? What did he say? He's begging us to come now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right, Mr. Scott, we'll all be over in an hour, and thanks for the invitation. Goodbye, Scotty. Hello, Remley. Hello. Hello. Remley, Remley. I tell you, I don't want you... Oh, well, if he shows up, I can always poison his drink. <laughs> oh, dear. Why, Clyde, you look terribly upset. What's wrong? Brace yourself, Myrtle. I have terrible news for you. We're on the brink of disaster. Oh, Clyde, don't tell me the stock market crashed and you're wiped out. Oh, if it was only that simple. <laughs> this is much worse. Remley is coming to our party. Oh, no. Well, what are we going to do? I don't know. He's on his way over now, and I... Myrtle, 
Do you think we can pack and be ready to move in an hour? <laughs> ridiculous. Why don't we just turn the lights out? If he thinks nobody's home, he'll go away. Not Remley. He'll break in. <laughs> well, he's never been here. Maybe he won't find the place. No, no. The Harrises have our address, and they... Wait a minute. They may have our address, but they've never been to the house. If I could take the number off our house and put it on Mr. Sweeney's house... But, darling, Mr. Sweeney's the sheriff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can't think of a better house for Mr. Remley to break into. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll get busy changing numbers. All right, dear. And just in case he happens to find our house, I'll make preparations for his arrival. I'll lock up the silverware and I'll have the guests put their valuables in the wall safe. And put my elephant gun in the vestibule. <laughs> Hey, Alice If you're all ready, we can start going over to the Scots oh, Phil, are you sure Mr. Scott invited us? Oh, he was very insistent, wasn't he, Frankie? Oh, yeah He said he'd be very hurt if we didn't show up He threatened to shoot himself with an elephant gun <laughs> <laughs> So come on, Alice, let's hurry, let's All go All right, if you... Phil, what have you got under your arm? My music When I'm called upon to sing, I want to be prepared How do you know the Scots will ask you to sing? Oh, doll, how can you talk like that? <laughs> They're sure to ask me to sing, but in case they don't, I'll suggest it I'll ask Mr. Scott if he wants me to sing And before he has a chance to say no... I'll be into the song like this. Young Johnny Jones, he had a cute little boat. And all the girlies he would take for a float. He had girlies by the score. Sweet little peaches on the shore. But Johnny was a Weisenheimer, you know. His steady girl was Flo. And every Sunday afternoon They'd jump in his boat and they would spoon And then he'd row, row, row Right up that river he would row, row, row A hug he'd give her then He'd kiss her now and then She would tell him when He'd fool around and fool around And then he'd kiss again And then he'd row, row, row A little further he would row Just he and Flo With her head on his chest He'd take a few measures rest And then he'd row Roll, roll. In Johnny's boat he had a cute little seat And all the kisses that he stole were so sweet And he knew just how to row He was a rowing Romeo He had an island where the trees were so grand He knew just how to land then tales of love he'd tell the flow Until it was time for them to go And he'd row, row, row On up that river he would row so slow A hug he'd give her, then he'd kiss her now and then She would tell him when He'd fool around and fool around And then he'd kiss her <laughs> A little further he would row Just he and flow then he'd drop both his oars, take a few more encores, and then he'd row, 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 just to in Florence. Row, row, row right into heaven. Row, row. He had no Johnson Motors, so Johnny and Flo would row, row, row. Alice, we ought to be pretty close to Scotty's house now. What was his number again? 1300. Well, I'll drive slow and, and uh, uh, you watch the numbers, Remley. Okay. Let's see, this is 751, 753, 755, 1300. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get this. There's something wrong. Well, what's wrong? <laughs> I thought we did that very good. Well, the numbers jumped from 755 to 1300. 
and an even number on the odd side of the street. Well, you know Beverly Hills. They gotta be different. <laughs> Come on, let's get out, huh? Hey, Bill. I don't see any lights in the house. If they're having a party, why are the lights out? Uh, maybe they're necking. <laughs> If they are, I get first crack at the maid. Wait. <laughs> Bill, Bill, look, there's a police car in the driveway. A police? Hey, Remley, did the cops know you were coming to this place? <laughs> Don't be a wise guy. They're not here for me. Must be Mr. Scott's parole officer. Yeah. <laughs> well, come on, let's hurry in, boy. I can't wait to get started in that now, party. Now, fellas, gonna... I want you to behave yourselves because... The... Pardon me, could you tell me where to find a Scott's house? I got some... Oh, hello, Mr. Harris. Hey, it's Julius. Hey, right in here, kid. Hey, old Jill, huh? Don't tell me you were invited to this party, too. Nah, I'm just making a delivery. I got four cases of drinks for the Scott's party. Hey, around. <laughs> hey, Lefty, did you hear that? Four cases of this stuff Yeah Two for each of us <laughs> Hey, uh, what kind of stuff did they order, kid? Old whipping post or tiger's breath? <laughs> better than that What could be better? Now, what did they order, kid? Cherry pop, cream soda, and celery tonic. <laughs> oh, I could see we're in for a gay time. I hope we're not too late for the first minuet. Julius, why are you wearing a tuxedo? Well, this is my last delivery. I'm going to a party from here. You know, this is the first time I ever wore a tuxedo. How do I look in this monkey suit? Like a monkey? <laughs> Bill, I think he looks very cute. You have a date tonight, Julius? Yeah. I guess who I got a date with? I don't know, but I'll bet she's the best-looking camel in Beverly Hills. <laughs> she's not a camel! But you're close. <laughs> That's no way to talk about a girl you're dating. Well, I didn't want to date her. It's my cousin. My mother's making me take her out. Oh? What does she look like? Oh, you ought to see her. Oh, is she a girl? Is she a girl? That's the first question everybody asks. <laughs> Julius, if you don't like the dame, what are you taking her out for? She's got money. She's a debutante. <laughs> oh, a society girl. Is her name in Who's Who? No, but they got a picture in What's This? <laughs> Well, I, uh, I better get this stuff into Mr. Scott's Yeah, yeah, we better get in that party, too, before it's all over Come on Now, Frankie, Frankie, watch your manners tonight Don't do what you did at the last party we took you to What did I do wrong? All I did was drink champagne out of a lady's slipper I know, but you're not supposed to go around measuring which one has the biggest foot <laughs> Hey, nobody answered yet Ring the bell again Phil. Phil, this is very strange. There are no lights on. Nobody answers the door. Are you sure we have the right house? Certainly. This is number 1300. Maybe they're in another room and can't hear us. I'll try that door. Uh-oh, it's locked. Step aside. I'll get us in. <laughs> Frankie, if the door's locked, how are you going to get us in? Fortunately, I brought my axe. <laughs> Stand back, everybody. Frankie, you can't batter the door down. Oh, don't be so formal. <laughs> Phil, I think maybe we ought to go home. Honey, we can't do that. If we don't show up, the Scots will be insulted. <laughs> now, what was that? I don't know. I just happened to lean against the window with my axe and the pain splinter. <laughs> Cheap glass. <laughs> I guess so. Well, look, as long as the window's broken, hey... Julius, long as that window's broken, why don't you crawl in that front door for us, huh? Okay. Phil, I don't think we're doing the right thing. <laughs> Please, Alice, let us handle this. They were nice enough to invite us to the party. The least we can do is to make an effort to get in. <laughs> okay, the door's open. Come on in and watch your step. Phil, I don't like the looks of this. 
The room is pitch dark. Mr. Harris, did the Scots know that you and Mr. Rimley was coming? Yeah. Maybe it's a booby trap. <laughs> well, I'm going to turn the light on. Hey, this is a nice room. And look what's on the desk. What? A gun, a pair of handcuffs, and the sheriff's badge. Isn't that cute? Scotty's <laughs> playing hoppy again. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there's the doorbell. Must be some more of the guests. Come in. Why, it's Mr. and Mrs. Scott. Oh, Mrs. Harris, thank goodness we got here in time. In time, she says. You're two hours late for your own party. Yeah, where have you been, Mrs. Scott? Mr. Harris, my husband has a confession to make. Go ahead. Tell them, Clyde. Oh, very well. Harris, I did something tonight that my wife tells me I'm ashamed of. <laughs> You see, this house we're in isn't... All the... right, everybody, stay where you are and put your hands up. Mr. Sweeney! What are you people doing here? Uh, look, Mr. Sweeney, I can explain this. Don't I... move or I'll put a hole through you. Uh, yes, sir. Don't let him bluff you, Scotty. Jump him and take his gun away. <laughs> he tries it, I'll shoot him. I'd like to see you. <laughs> you can't talk that way to our boss. The boss, huh? So, you're the leader of this mob. Uh, now, uh, wait a minute, Mr. Sweeney. I happen to be a respectable citizen of this community. Surely you've seen me around? Yes, and I always figured a guy with a face like yours couldn't make his money honestly. <laughs> Don't you dare talk to my husband that way! Tell Ma Barker to button her lip. <laughs> you can't scare us. Let's rush him, Remley. Yeah, we'll take him apart. You two take one step and I'll plug you. You mean if these guys take one step, you'll kill him? Yeah. Mr. Remley, Mr. Harris. What? On your mark, get shot, go! Junior! <laughs> Junior, stop pushing! Get away from us. Come on, Remley, let's take him. Don't do it, Harris. You're making a mistake. You hit him high, Remley. I'll hit him low. Harris, it's the sheriff! <laughs> that was quite a brawl. It certainly was. You two fellas are the oh, worst... Oh, honey, now don't be a sore head. It was all in fun. After all, it's New Year's Eve and you... Hey, it's 12 o'clock. It's the New Year. Happy New Year, everybody. Should all acquaintance be forgot and never... Hey, you! What? No singing in the patrol wagon. <laughs> Oh, Sheriff, don't be a wet blanket. It's New Year's Eve, and it's a happy occasion, and everybody wants to sing. Alice, Frankie, Julius, and... and how about you, sir? Don't talk to me, Harris. <laughs> a man of my importance in a patrol wagon. This is the first time a thing like this has ever happened to me. Oh, no, it isn't, Clyde. Don't you remember the time they raided that burlesque show, and you were... Oh, button your lip! <laughs> Come on, everybody. Let's all be happy and sing. Sure. Old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind. Should old acquaintance be forgot and days of all lang syne. For Tonight, the old year goes out and the new one comes in. Let's all hold fate for this new year that the way for peace will be found. But if not found, let America be strong and not be found wanting. Stay tuned for Hedda Hopper, then Theater Guild on NBC. Mm -hmm. 